In researching on the uh, Second Continental Lake Dragoons, Sheldon's Dragoons that is, I came across the uh, page of the reenactors. We have a fantastic historical page, a PowerPoint history lesson, all kinds of items. It, it's, it's killer. It's killer. I'm using a lot of other sources as well, but this is just killer stuff. And one of the articles, so there's a series of articles, which I really liked because one was on Monmouth, and uh, I'll, we'll be getting to that in the podcast. It's one article, A French Connection, details of the involvement of the Second Light Dragoons when Rochambeau uh, landed in Rhode Island, and Washington's army and the French army meet. The Second New York Campaign, which was started along after the victory at Springfield to all guys the eventual movement of uh, troops down to Yorktown. Pretty good success, and we'll talk about some of that as well. This details the meeting and the involvement of Sheldon's Dragoons and the first joint operation between the United States forces and a foreign power, that being the Kingdom of France. These are Washington's eyes and shield, and they would become Russia bows as well, with these forays in Connecticut, Long Island, and New York, taking ground back and setting the ruse for the eventual surrounding and capture of the Southern Army in Yorktown, beginning in September and ending in October, 1781. In this article, the French Connection. Preparations for the new campaign are underway by February 1781. Both the political and military meetings are more often held despite the season. Into this, Sheldon arrives quietly. 12 he will be dealing more with the Duth de Lawson. Winter gives way to the spring of 1781, and it finds Sheldonivos getting ready to take the field of battle. The French are now planning the routes to take. General Belleville takes different routes to and from New Windsor, NY to Rhode Island. General Washington keeps the expresses going and sends letters of planning and intelligence to the French and the Connecticut suppliers. 13 as spring goes by the armies prepare to join up for action against the British in New York. More dragoons are used for the daily communications between Rhode Island and Washington or headquarters. Washington has only two dragoons for himself. The 14th of May is a good month for the second continental Connecticut light horse. Despite the expresses and meetings, his unit horse officer so hard work pays off, and by late May the regiment boasts 300 men. By the 31st of May, the regiment appears to be fully equipped. None of this has escaped General Washington. He writes to Governor Trumbull that Sheldon's Dragoons is to be our and my immediate commander 15 the time to act has come, and Sheldon's is ready, with the additional confidence of General Washington. At this point Sheldon's Dragoons has earned a reputation for its service. The aide-de-camp for Rochambeau gives us a good reason why Sheldon's second light horse was picked. On November 24, 1780, he writes in his journal, Our these dragoons are perfectly mounted, and do not fear meeting the English dragoons, over whom they have gained several advantages. So 16 the army of Rochambeau begins its march on or about the 18th of May, 1781. Washington has a new aide-de-camp, David Cobb who is appointed on the 15th of June, 1781. His responsibility will be to follow on with the French and escort them to General Washington, 17 on the 29th of June. Cobb writes Washington from Newtown, Connecticut. He reports that the divisions are moving well, and he will send horsemen in advance to the general, with notice of the Marcos progress and position, so that all may be ready when they arrive. 18 Chastellux remarks that Cobb has since he knew all the country perfectly. He was to remain with us to help plan our Marquesa 19 on the 27th of June. Washington assigns Cobb to attend Rochambeau. 20 Cobb had been with some of Sheldon's dragoons to assist in the escort. References were made by the liaison of Washington and Rochambeau or Sade de Camp. Von Clausen on the 1st of July at Ridgebury. Our American dragoons occupied a position halfway between our army and General Washington at 21 Another verification is the journal of Clermont Crevkauer who is part of the staff family of Rochambeau who remarks on the 2nd of July, 1781. Our had besides 160 American dragoons. 
Sheldon Second Continental Dragoons A Diarysis I Grave Cold Cod Commandingo The French staff member was well impressed with Sheldon's, as he went on to say, Oho are incontestably the best troops on the continent. They are permanently attached to General Washington and form his bodyguard. He is always attended by an escort of these brave men. A 22 military practice dictated that you send a visiting commander an escort of your best troops as a gesture of honor and respect. In keeping with military tradition, Sheldon's light horse was obviously a good choice for both sides. Although there is no great revelation in the real facts, the march of Rochambeau was communicated by Sheldonios Expresses, and the intelligence provided by Captain Hulbert and Maj Talmadge in 1780 and 1781. The march was completely escorted by Sheldons from Newtown to Peekskill and Bedford, New York. The facts found so far show some involvement of, and appreciation of the French for, Sheldon's Dragoons. It is quite possible other earlier escorts with Washington also escorted some of the French officers. This would be based upon the fact that they would fall into the realm of daily routine duties and would not be something special to write about. It may be due to the secrecy that was needed that they were sure not to write it down. Sheldon's Dragoons did their duty to both armies and in the process did a faithful service to their own memory which by facts written on some old letters lets them live again. Let us never forget the sacrifices and efforts made by a few for the benefit of so many not of just this country but for the world.